Well, weaving through the plains, Piedmont and Rolling Mountains are thousands of miles of railroad tracks. And since the first train connected Wilmington and Weldon in the early 1800s, legends on the rails have left a mark of mystery on the imagination of many. Well, tonight, Chief Transportation Correspondent Hawker Vanguard has a black and white Halloween story sure to give you the Carolina creeps. History has a way of taking us on a trip. Sometimes you find clues about certain things, but not everything. Was it an accident or something planned? 130 years later and people are still trying to find the answer as to why train number nine lies at the bottom of Third Creek. Coal-fired steam locomotive operating um, you know, at, at track speed. Uh, blowing the whistle, the smoke, you know, coming from the from the locomotive. Marcus Neubacher with the North Carolina Transportation Museum says some things we know for sure. It was August 1891 at about 2.30 in the morning. Train number nine pulled out of Statesville Station behind schedule on a trip that would end short of its final destination. They wrecked on the Boston Bridge, which went over Third Creek. Um, the, the accident killed 22 people uh, as the train plummeted into the, the creek down below. From what we know, the survivors walked back to Statesville and reported the horrible accident. Why did the Richmond and Danville locomotive with six coaches crash? History books have one way of telling the story. They said that um, there were some vagrants along the the line and that they had removed some of the spikes that hold the rails together. Later on it was determined that the railroad line was in financial trouble and it may have been some sort of attempt to collect insurance. But it wouldn't be the last time people say train nine jumped the tracks on Boston Bridge. To the day, absolutely, to the day. Tina McSwain's passion is the paranormal. She's heard the story from 1891, but it's the story from 1950 that brought her and the Charlotte Area Paranormal Society back to the crash site. There was a lady and her husband had car trouble out on the road, and the uh, lady was left with the car. The man was trying to find help. Uh, she stayed back with the vehicle and claims that just about 3 o'clock in the morning she heard a train whistle, saw the headlights, saw the smoke, train approaching. Coming off the Boston Bridge, was very upset, went to find her husband, told him that you know she had heard all this uh, massive sounds of crashing, uh, people wailing. How did they hear and see that train 50 years after the crash? Tina says she doesn't know for sure, but wanted to find out if she could experience the same thing more than a century later. Because there's been so much unknown about the train crash, they didn't expect much. But the funny thing is, about 3.30, 3.35 in the morning, this great rush of wind came down the tracks, strong enough to blow out two candles that we had placed in the middle of the two rails. Could it have been a random breeze or a spectral locomotive? Maybe one of the 22 passengers who never made it out of the creek. There are certain areas um, due to the, just the history or the, the geography of that area can, can hold uh, paranormal activity longer. The tales of the ghost train and the secrets it took with it when it launched off the side of Boston Bridge still captivate many more than 100 years after one of the deadliest train crashes in the Carolinas. In Statesville, I'm Hawker Vanguard. That was spooky, wasn't it? We'll hear more from Hawker this weekend. He is on his way to Florida for the next SpaceX launch. All right, you can watch out for reports from Hawker tomorrow night. NASA astronaut Thomas Mashburn is one of the members of the SpaceX crew. He's a Statesville native and attended Davidson College. The rocket will lift off Sunday morning.